Hi everybody, my name is Andrea of MacAdres.com. Today I am sitting here with Destiny Swindell. Yes. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I want to thank you, first of all, for coming out so early on a Saturday morning to meet with me. Oh, good. Thanks for having me. This interview is long overdue because we have been going back and forth, just always switching dates, changing mm -hmm. dates, something like that. So tell us how you've been. How's 2019 treating you so far? 2019, so far, so good. I, honestly, I was like really, really lazy at the end of last year. So um, the start of the new year kind of lit a fire under my butt. So we're trying to get things done with this 2019 outlook and things are starting to happen. So. So yeah. what do you have planned? Because I know in 2018, you guys did a lot. Yeah, we did a bit. Um, we have a lot more planned for this year. Um, some of the things that we've done, we want to continue doing. Um, so, of course, you know, the features and the dinners are foundational to Strivers Row. Um, we'll also uh, be doing campaigns again. We'll do our Black Business Row campaign um, again in August, but looking to um, layer in a couple more. We'll be doing something for Black History Month, hopefully for the holiday at the end of the year. Um, and then really trying to just like blow out our program and create opportunities for strivers to come together. Um, you know, opportunities for more kind of invite only things. So strivers plus folks who we know would be great to be in a room with them. Mm -hmm. um, and then really just working to, you know, establish partnerships with brands, other entities and community builders to make things bigger and better. So you keep saying Strivers Row. Tell yes. us a little bit more about that and um, who are these strivers that you yeah. keep talking about? It's a community of um, young black doers, um, young entrepreneurs, creators and professionals uh, who are really dope folks. The people who are truly doing the work. Um, you know, I think in, in New York there are a lot of people who appear to be um, doing major things mm -hmm. or, or kind of you know, playing the clout game, but these are people yeah. who, are, who are really working. Um, and so, yeah, we create a space um, to recognize them, to highlight them, to bring them together, to relationship build. Um, and, you know, we do as much as we can to connect them with opportunities to elevate their brands and platforms also. So what kind of things do you do for them? Because you said you do as much things to elevate their brands and platforms. So what do you offer them? Right. So uh, as someone signs on to be a striver, again, like I said, those staple things are um, the features that we do. So um, our creative director, Gerard, shoots them. Um, we Then I do an interview with them. Those live on our website. Um, we also host quarterly dinners to bring the group together. Um, and then all of this other program that I mentioned, right, the campaigns are, you know, again, opportunity for them to their faces to be on the streets of New York right for them to connect with brands uh, you know who see value in them and what they do as a community um, and so and then also sometimes opportunities kind of filter through me to them I could be a conduit to reach them for people who can't figure out how to um, but it's really at the core um, what we're trying to create is a, is a real family feel um, you know what we've realized or what a lot of us ambitious folks know is that you know it, it's it's kind of a lonely game sometimes, or one yeah. that, um, you know, can make you feel crazy. Yeah. Honestly. When you're yeah. like really, really driven and you're making sacrifices that people can't understand. Um, and so we want a space where they can come and just be, right? And mm -hmm. people get it, right? People get their crazy dreams and all the hours that they put in. And, you know, they can talk about that side of their life, but then also the personal things too. So where is this Strivers role based? Where are you guys mainly based? Um, so I mean, what Strivers are located for now um, in the New York area, uh, we draw inspiration from Strivers Row in Harlem. So it's uh, two blocks uh, in Harlem, 137th and 138th Streets mm -hmm. between um, 7th and 8th Avenue. Um, and so back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, when Harlem was still white, uh, the state of the home, state of the art homes were built. Um, you know. For the time, like they had indoor plumbing, they have alleyways behind them, which is very atypical of New York. Wow. Um, but as the homes were being built, the demographics of Harlem shifted, right? And so it became black, and they refused to sell these homes to black people. So they sat there and deteriorated for a while. And then eventually it's like, okay, you've invested in something, you need to recoup your money. And they opened them up to black buyers, and so the affluent folks of the time moved in. Um, and so for us, we saw this connection 
Um, you know, and that really nothing in this country was built for us, right? They tried to keep us out as long as they could. Girl. Um, Girl. But once we got in, we made it what it is, right? And now this is like a national historic site. You know, Strivers Row is Strivers Row because black folks came in and did their thing the way that they did it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that experience is, is what we all go through every day. Like we're trying to penetrate and create change in spaces that for the most part aren't that welcoming to us, but you know, we still get in there and do what we have to do. That is so interesting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's always baffles me that conversation of how much people of color we do in society and how much non-credit we get on mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And it's always given to the next person who either is a lighter skin color or of Caucasian descent that gets the full credit of how things really started. Yeah, and that's, all that. it's, it's been going on for as long as we can remember, right? Yeah. <laughs> so in an interview you did with the medium, you mentioned how for this campaign that you did last year, there was an opportunity that came in and you just took it. Mm -hmm. So what was the opportunity that came in to make this huge campaign you did in New York City last year for Strivers Row? Yeah, so um, actually one of our Strivers, Alize Garcia, uh, she's also a Howard alum, so we've known each other for a while. Um, she works at Intersection, which is the company that owns um, the Link Wi-Fi kiosks that are on the streets. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we were actually doing her shoot for her feature on Strivers Row, she mentioned, you know, we do have a program that allows like small businesses and other folks to use the screen. She was like, but really it was kind of the idea of a, Gerard having some way to get his photography out there. That's originally what I came up with. Mm -hmm. um, but she was like, but sit down, you know, think about some kind of campaign, something bigger that we can do. And I think I can probably push it through. I know, like, you, you have the creative minds to do it. So uh, it was actually, I had just quit my job because I was miserable. Um, and Gerard had a photo shoot, so he asked me to, like, assist him with the shoot. Then after, I'm like, hey, you remember Alan said that thing? Like, let's, let's you know, figure something out. So I was a, well, still am um, a media strategist. And so I, I put on the hat that I had worn for the last five years. And I started to make what we always call in the game, like a connections calendar. So it's literally like just going through and trying to figure out what kind of things are happening in the world that you can align with. So um, we start researching like what are, you know, national what are the national holidays coming up? And there are always those obscure ones, like National Watermelon Day. I did joke that we should do something for National Watermelon Day. He was like, we'll be canceled. Um, but then we come across the fact that um, August is uh, National Black Business Month. But we are like, did you know about this? I didn't know about this. And we're really black, you know? Really love our people. How did we not know? And it was in its 15th year. Um, so that was kind of the onus, the, the thing that, you know, um, lit a spark in us, and so then we just tried to figure out what was the best way to kind of align with this, how could we shed some light on, you know, not just the businesses that Strivers owned, but also other black-owned businesses around the city. Um, and we took it from there, and we launched the campaign from that point of ideation to launch was like three weeks, uh, which was pretty insane. But, um, you know, I think it, for me it was a testament to timing because there was no way that it could have happened if I would have still had a nine to five. Um, and because I didn't have one, we were able to like, really, we were from between the Bronx, Manhattan, um, and Brooklyn on the train and Ubers, burning for photo shoots, going back to do video. Um, but it, it all came together somehow. How many entrepreneurs you had involved in this campaign? Uh, so we featured 18 different businesses. Um, mm -hmm. And so some of those were striver owned businesses. The strivers appeared in the ads, but then we also had about, so in total, we probably had about, uh, well, I guess we had 18 strivers participate mm -hmm. also, um, but then some were aligned with their own business and the other shot in some of the businesses that we pulled in. So with this campaign, was it self-funded or what, did the company fund you guys to do this campaign? So um, Link, they didn't, we didn't have a monetary exchange, but they provided us with the space, um, which is incredibly valuable. Again, I was a media planner and buyer, so I, I know how much it costs to run campaigns on those screens, and it's not cheap, right? Some of the top advertisers in the world appear on them. Um, so the fact that we didn't have to pay for like an incredible on the street advertising space was, was amazing from them. Um, and then we also were able to secure a partnership with Verizon. Um, so they uh, were able to come in and help us cover uh, the cost for creating all the content and the event that we had. Um, and I1 Digital came in also not with a monetary partnership, but um, a partnership in terms of distribution. So the video that we participated, they were able to host on their website. And I mean, they get you know millions of uniques 
a month. So oh, wow. again, it was, it, and it's not, it's not always about money, right? Money, money is great and money can make things happen. But like, I was very grateful for the non-monetary, um, you know, ways that we were able to partner people to help extend the reach of the campaign too. That's dope. Yeah, I'm really blessed. Okay, I was like, so I how long? Be a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been in this entrepreneur journey? Um, so, I mean, Strivers Row launched in August of 2017. Oh. Um, so we're at about a year and a half now, which is which is crazy. Um, and how much have they grown since the launch? Uh, pretty significantly. I actually looked at um some numbers and. You know, I mean, in terms of our social following has grown, um, our rents are doing well, uh, but I looked at the website and even our, like our visitors grew um, four and a half times year over year. Um, oh, wow. So it's really good. Yeah, it's I was, really I was good. very happy because it's like sometimes you're doing things and, and you don't know if people are really paying attention to it, right? Yeah. Um, and it's very easy for people and, and I'm fine with people who just engage on social, right? Engage in the way that makes sense to you, but mm -hmm. it was a very conscious decision for us to do um, written interviews so that, you know, you could go back to it and reference points and I'm happy that people are doing that and hopefully getting good gems for their lives out of it. That's amazing. With your team, how many people in total do you have on the Strivers Row team? Because you do you don't only do Strivers Row. You also do brand strategy. Yeah. As like a consulting company. Mm -hmm. And you also do something else as well. Um, I'm a party promoter too. Which oh, is party promoter. Kind of random. Um, but yeah. technically with Starbucks Row, you can technically say you incorporate it yeah, all because yeah. with your dinners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that the, the party promoter thing is a is kind of random. And no one who knows me, who knew me before I started promoting parties, ever would have thought that I would be a party promoter. But it's cool. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so the team. Um, so uh, our core team is uh, three folks. So myself, um, Duke Charles, who is uh, my co-founder, he came on board um, at the beginning of last year. We both uh, went to Howard together. Um, well, actually, we didn't even know each other at Howard. We were there at the same time. And he's also a party promoter. It's funny. We're, we're the most introverted party promoters you would ever meet. It doesn't make really? sense. Um, but basically, he was kind of had some inklings of doing some community building efforts. And then, you know, I really appreciate the fact that, you know, he was able to come to me and have a conversation to say, like, we're kind of, we kind of want to do the same things. It doesn't make sense for us to compete, especially since our networks are so similar. Mm -hmm. um, and so he came on board and it has been amazing. Um, it's been awesome to have someone else to do this with. It's really great. Um, and then Gerard Anderson is our creative director. Uh, he was actually, he's been with me since the beginning, um, you know, shooting all the photos and over time, like allowing him, you know, to really create the, the look and feel of this community. Uh, so that's kind of our core group. Um, and then we have um, some lovely interns who have come, you know, over now for years, right? And to help us who have been amazing, uh, who really just kind of believe in what we do and want to help in the ways that they can. Uh, so we're a small, but I think mighty machine. With your team, I know you guys are not from New York itself. Duke is from New York. He's Duke from Brooklyn. Is from New York. Um, but Gerard and I are transplants. Yeah. But are you guys eventually trying to bring this back to your hometown, the Strivers Row? Or what is a long-term goal for it that you want to do? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm from Hampton, Virginia, so <laughs> I don't know that it'll make it to my hometown. Um, but we do uh, want to expand to other cities. Uh, you know, we do want New York to be a well-oiled machine and you know, blown out to a point where, you know, we feel comfortable stretching ourselves beyond it before we do that. So, so we'll see when it happens. Um, and our thinking, DC is probably the next place. Uh, again, Duke and I went to Howard, so we have a lot of connections DC's there. Dope. Yeah, and there's a lot of amazing, amazing things happening yeah. there. Uh, so it seems like our next logical step. But I mean, over time, we would love, you know, to have a presence in all the major cities, right? And if possible, and there's a way that we can make it make sense, right? Tap into some, some of those smaller markets too. But really what we would love to have is this like national network of, again, doers who are doing dope things, innovative things, who are pushing and who are doing it in a way that pushes the culture forward by being their authentic selves and, and not fitting into the boxes that sometimes people feel like they have to, to attain success. Now that you've had this taste of entrepreneurship and you're living the entrepreneurial lifestyle, mm -hmm. would you ever go back to a regular nine to five for that, for that stability right there? Or you're like, you know what, I'm gonna grind it out and do what I gotta do. Yeah, I mean, funny you ask, because I am, I am, <laughs> I am um, I, my, my break has been fun, um, mm -hmm. but these New York bills, 
Um, so like in all transparency, like I'm job hunting right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had the conversation with my dad today because this morning, because he's like, you know, it's, it's hard. New York is really expensive, right? And I take a lot of pride in being self-sufficient. Um, and like, you know, I had a conversation with my mom and then she called my dad and now they're calling me. They're like, what do you need? Why didn't you ask us? Like, you know, and, been in, in, but I love my parents so much because both of them are like, hey, like, it's okay. Like, you took the time off, you were able to get a lot accomplished and maybe it's just not your moment right now for you to make the jump for good. Like, go back to work, stack, you know, stack some funds and like, we'll do this again and we're with you and we believe in you. Like, it's just about timing. Um, so, you know, I'm always like very transparent and when I quit my job, right, I would, when I quit it, I was like, I'm not the person who's like, I'm done forever, right? Because mm -hmm. I, I, there's, I have my limits to struggle. Some people can struggle more than others, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I like to pay my bills. I like to pay my bills on time. You know, I like to be able to support the people who I love and care about, right? Mm -hmm. And their endeavors. So yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, prepared to go back and figure out a way to, you know, do the nine to five, five to nine life for a period of time until, you know, I'm in a space where I can jump again and go, you know, balls to the wall on Starbucks Row. The reason, it's funny you brought that up. The reason I ask is because, especially here in New York, with this entrepreneurial culture, it's like huge here. Mm -hmm. Many people have the mindset of, you're not a real entrepreneur because you have a job. Mm -hmm. And I find that to be wrong. Absolutely, it's totally incorrect. Yeah, because just like you said, entrepreneurship is, entrepreneurship is not easy. It's not. It's, it takes a lot out of you mentally, Physically, emotionally, a lot. Of and financially, right? Oh, financially. And, and yeah. so, you know, we're still at the point where we're trying to bootstrap this thing. It costs money to do the things that we want to do. And so if I'm not making money, how can I put money into Strivers Row? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's just the, the realities of the, the situation. And right. I like, you know, I think that, again, with the entrepreneurial culture that you speak of, like there can... I don't know, there are a lot of pressures that you can feel. A lot of pressures you can feel to make the jump. A lot of pressures you can feel to stay out there even when they're drowning. Right. Um, and that's not me. Look, I'm like, I, I have to be comfortable. I mean, the stress of not knowing how, where, you know, how you're gonna be able to pay your bills is not healthy. It's really right. not. Right. Um, and so like, I'm, I'm gonna do what I gotta do type of person. And, yeah. you know, I'll catch y'all in a couple of years when I'm back to, you know, doing this full time. But like, we're still going to make amazing things happen while both Duke and I are grinding it out at our 9 to 5. So in 2019, what should we expect for, from Strivers Row? Well, especially with these dinners, because what exactly with these dinners that you do? Because you keep talking about dinners. Yeah, How often yeah. do you do it? What exactly do you do? Um, so the Strivers dinner, uh, we do every quarter. Um, we have them come back up to Harlem. As much as possible, we try to shoot the Strivers on Strivers Row. Sometimes there are just scheduling conflicts or things that get in the way of that. But we try to shoot them on Strivers Row, and we want them to come back to Harlem for the dinner each quarter. Um, so uh, with each dinner, um, we have a private chef come in. We rent out a space. Um, you know, you sold me on private chef already. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> and so and we wanted to create. We want to create a really like special experience for them. Um, and so there are ten seats for strivers at each dinner. Priority for those seats go to members of the current cohort. But if folks have missed their dinners in the past, we kind of fill in with them. So there's some mixing and mingling. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it's just a good night. Like I mean, we we always I always start off the dinners with my cousin's speech. Uh, because again, I want this to feel like family. I want this to feel like you can come as you are. And again, that's and that's the full spectrum of who you are and like embracing that the blackness looks different, right? Mm -hmm. um, but my cousin speech is always like, black folks do cousins in a way that other folks don't really do cousins, right? You have your cousins by blood, you have your play cousins, you have cousins who are like siblings, you have right. cousins who you only see at family functions, you right. have the cousin who never comes to the family functions, right? But you're but still family. You're still family, mm -hmm. right? And you'll look out for each other and you'll never do anything to undermine each other. Right. And right. usually that helps set the tone and people really come to So we drink wine, we tend to get, you know, a little tipsy and the conversation flows how it flows, right? Some dinners, you know, we may have conversations that are more around politics. We may have conversations that are around personal things. It just depends on the people at the table, but we just really break bread. Like, it's like, we're gonna, we gonna drink some wine, we're gonna have some good food, we're gonna sit around this table and talk about whatever's on your heart. Um, so those are the, the Strivers dinners. We're also starting this year um, to do these niche dinners. Um, and so we realized that um, through actually one of, one of the Strivers dinners, 
um, a particular striver was like, it, it is great to meet people who do different things, right? Mm -hmm. We totally appreciate it for that, but there is always value in building connections with people who do things that are similar to you, right. um, or you know, are on um, you know similar endeavors. Uh, so the niche dinners, the first one that we're going to do is the entrepreneurs dinner. Um, we'll be partnering with Facebook and Verizon on that, so we're really excited. And that is a, a thing about the niche dinners. These will always be branded because I can't keep paying for stuff, okay? <laughs> you can feed y'all once. I can't feed y'all 12 times. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but nonetheless, we're very grateful for the brand partners to come on and see value in the community. Um, and so we'll invite any strivers who fit a particular niche, but we'll also have some other folks who you know we think are really dope in those spaces come in too. Um, these also these are a little bit larger than the Strivers dinners, mm -hmm. um, and it's always also a way for us to kind of you know meet and get to know people who we think are uh, great as potential Strivers, okay. right? And and we're and as this group gets bigger, we are realizing that we have to take the necessary necessary steps to protect the integrity of it so that that energy feels right. Um, and so as much as possible, we are trying to get acquainted with people, at least to, to fill them out a little bit before we extend an invitation so that someone doesn't come in and just throw off the vibe. Um, so the niche dinners are starting to happen. We're hoping to do at least one of those per quarter, but you know, if the brand partnerships come, we'll, look, we'll do as many as, as they want and, and do different cross sections of the group. So, you know, we may do a creatives dinner or a tech dinner or a, you know, a women's dinner, a over 30 dinner, a under 30 dinner, mm -hmm. um, just based on what the objectives are for the folks who we partner with on that. Um, so th those are the dinners. Um, I mentioned the campaign. So uh, we're going to be shooting our Black History Month campaign next week. Um, and it'll be around black language. Um, so the Black History Month campaign, it's called Habitual Be, um, and it'll be around black language. So the Habitual Be is the way that black folks talk, we say I be, she be, he be, right? Um, and so, th so this, our stance on it, and we are really big, authenticity is one of our core values. Um, and so one of the things that we're, that we want to push you with the campaign is that the way that we speak is different, mm -hmm. right? But it's not wrong. It's, right. There are a complex set of rules to this thing, and there are ways to speak it incorrectly, right? You know when someone is using, well, Ebonics or African American vernacular English, like, you know when they're, they're doing it wrong, right? Right. You can misspeak it just like anything else. Oh, yeah. Right. It's like when some people, when they don't know how to curse, yeah. you can tell. Yeah, and it's, and it's like a really curse. cringy thing, right? right. But it's because, yeah. like, this is a valid... Thing. It's a valid way of expression, and so well, not to use cursing as a comparison, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean, like yeah, that. I totally yeah. agree what you mean. Um, and so you know, for me, I'm like the habitual B is like that's like a code, a level one like code switch, you know? Right. Like again, like that's the one that may you may it may slip it even when you are trying to speak your best English because like it's a it's a real thing. It's a verb tense. It just doesn't exist in standard English, and it's and it has meaning, right? So, um, so nonetheless, we'll be kind of pushing that um, through the Black History Month campaign. Like I said, we'll do um, Black Business Row again, um, mm -hmm. and then hopefully holiday, the holiday campaign will be a reprise of Black Business Row to get people engaged with shopping with Black businesses at the end of the year. Um, we're looking to do um, you know, a lot more partnerships with folks to host events for the strivers, just little gatherings for them. Uh, but I think kind of two really exciting things that we hope to execute this year. Uh, so one thing, um, in May, we're calling it like an open conference, which I don't know if this is real terminology or not, but that's what we're calling it. <laughs> um, and so, you know, usually you go to a conference and it's one or two days, right? And it's jam packed with speakers. You just oh, yeah. back to back to back. And it can be kind of a draining experience. Even if everyone's great, by the yeah. end of the day, you're like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. Yeah. So yeah. what we're looking to do instead is kind of use the month of May to consolidate um, a lot of like speaker and panel programming that we like to execute. Oh, nice. um, and so, you know, at the very least, right, we'll have something once a week, but in reality, we would love Monday through Friday there to be things happening. Um, and so maybe like Mondays becomes, you know, the creative day, Tuesday is for entrepreneurs. Speakers. Throughout the whole month. Right, oh, and nice. so, but we really want this to be a collaborative effort with again, some of those entities and communities that some of our strivers have created or friends of our community have nice. um, done. Because, um, you know, as we're talking to, to people about brand partnerships, 
they're like, a lot of you guys are doing similar things. We're looking for scale. Like, how can we get you all to work together? Mm -hmm. um, so it's a little bit easier for us to push these things through because we see the value, we see the nuance, but we still need scale. But um, that's good that you fed that because yeah. the thing about a lot of people do the same thing nowadays, but working together, a lot of people have that mindset of competition it's mm. kind of like no when we work together we're going to build each other right instead of it being a competition against each other mm -hmm. yeah so um you know we're hoping that it's a it's a really big collaborative effort that again like those staple things that you know people have um you know been putting on or ideas that they want to execute that we can you know bring together resources we can get bigger checks to make them happen right of um you know we can promote things together um and start building a community of communities, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, so that's one thing. And then the other thing we would love to execute um, in September, hopefully, is this Row House pop-up. So uh, Row House is the name that we give to our dream of a physical space for folks to uh, congregate, our mm -hmm. strivers and you know other invited folks to congregate. Um, so we want to kind of do like a test run of it, um, you know, hopefully maybe for a week, a space where people can come, um, not necessarily just a co-working space, but a social space too. Um, and you know, brands, striver brands can sell. Um, hopefully we'll, some of the chefs that we've worked with will be able to come in and do food. Nice. Uh, so we'll see, that's a, that's a big goal for us to accomplish. We'll definitely need some amazing partners to make it happen, but I think we can do it. Um, so we'll see. Well, it sounds like 2019 is a full-blown packed year for you. Like, you guys are running all year, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. We're, like, we have, we've, like, kind of laid the foundation over time. Like, I think that we are starting to see, uh, really see how people receive it and how people take it in. Um, and so it's, it's a lot of us, like, believing that we can do things uh, and just giving it a try. And everything that we've tried to do has gone well so far. So I hope that that'll continue. Yes, and I'm definitely excited for it. I'm definitely excited to see what you guys have to do in 2019. Yeah, I'll make sure that you know all of the things. Oh, yes, lots coming. I'm there. All I'm right, there. girl. Lots, <laughs> lots coming, though. Okay, my name again is Andrea. I just sat with Destiny Stein. Well, if anybody wants to connect with you, find out about Strivers Row, help you guys in any way, where exactly can they connect with you at? Yeah, so uh, Strivers Row, our website is striversrow.co. Um, you can find us on Instagram at We Are Strivers Row. Um, and then me personally, um, my Instagram and Twitter handles are Chasing Destiny. That's D E S T I N E E. And then I can always be reached by email at destiny at striversrow.com. And everything she fed will be found below. So don't worry if you didn't catch it, because it will be below that information. Again, my name is Andrea of MacAndreas.com. I just sat with Destiny, and I cannot say her last name because I keep getting it wrong. I'm going to let her say that for you. Swindell. Swindell. Oh, why did I keep saying Swindell? It's all good. You know I have a little challenge with names. <laughs> Again, see us every Tuesday with new episodes and new interviews with amazing entrepreneurs like Miss Swindell. I said that correct? Swindell. <laughs> <laughs> that was close though. <laughs> All right then. See you next week. Bye.